Um, so first thing you want to know about getting onto RenWeb is that you have to have the appropriate browser. Uh, now many people will tell you that RenWeb might work for some browsers and not for others. The browser that I have never had any trouble with is Mozilla Firefox and so if you don't have that on your computer I would strongly encourage you to download that because some features are not accessible in other web browsers. So right now I'm on the website login.renweb.com and it brings up a page that looks like this and this is where we're going to log into our account. So I've already got my account information pretty much filled in. I'm just going to type my password in. And I'm going to log into RenWeb 1. Okay. So here is the home page for RenWeb once you log in. You'll see up in the upper left hand corner of the screen there is a little drop down menu. Uh, let's go ahead and click that. So when I click that, uh, that drop down menu we get several options that come up. Um, now teachers uh, probably won't use all of these options if, if only in one or two of them. Um, but let's just go through what I know about these and uh, we'll see if that transfers over to what you as teachers will be using this for. So what I like to go to is my classroom and this is going to be where I take attendance and enter grades. Okay, And you'll see when you enter it, when you go into my classroom all of your classes are listed as tiles. Okay, It's got a very um, modern feel to how this page looks and so let's say that I want to visit my Master Anatomy 1 class and so the default that uh, pops up when you click on that class is the attendance for the day because that's what you're probably going to do first thing in the day uh, when your class meets and so you'll see when attendance pops up you have every student's name listed um, and you can take attendance this way. I'll show you a, another way to take attendance in a little bit. Um, but you would basically go to um, add code um, if you wanted to mark them as present. Um, this code option gives you uh, the present option. You also have absent. You also have um, tardies excused, tardy unexcused. Um, and so you've got a, a lot of different codes that you can use. Uh, those are the main ones that I use every day. Um, after you take an attendance for the day, let's say that you want to enter in some grades later on. This little uh, central area up here in the gray, it says attendance, but it's got a little arrow next to it, which means we can drop that down and we can see a couple different things. So let's say that we wanted to enter something into the grade book. Well, then we would just go down until we hit gradebook. And you can see um, I've got my gradebook here on the screen. Now, up at the top, I've already entered in some categories for how I would like grades to be um, calculated in this class. Okay, And so if I wanted to uh, add an, a homework assignment, I would simply click on the category and it would bring me to that category's page. Okay. Now once you're on that category's page, the way that you add an assignment is by going over to this button over here with the, uh, the three little dots right here on the right hand side of my screen. When we click that, you can see there's the add assignment button right there. So when I click on add assignment, it's going to bring up the assignment information that needs to be entered before this assignment can be published to RenWeb. Okay? So it's going to ask for the title of the assignment, a description of what it is, when it was assigned, when it's due, how many points it's worth, and it's going to ask you for some weighting information. Okay? And so uh, that's basically how you add an assignment. When you're done adding it, you will simply go down to the lower right hand corner of the screen. You'll see a little floppy disk icon. Uh, my cursor is circling it. Once you hit that, that's the save button. Okay, and once you save it, you'll go back to your gradebook and you will see it appears um, in the category. Now, I didn't make an assignment and I didn't save it, so it's not showing up now. But if you were to actually enter the information and save it, it would now appear uh, on this page. Now, you can do that for any of your categories. So let's say I wanted to do something for tests. Well, then I would simply click on my tests category do the exact same thing, add an assignment, describe it, points, when it's due, save, and it's going to show up there. Okay. 
Um, you'll see I can also navigate uh, between those categories with this little drop down menu up here on the left side, left hand side of the screen. All right, and I can also navigate between different quarters if I wanted to uh, look back at some grades from uh, last term. Okay. Um, okay, let's go back uh, to the main grade book. Um, so that's basically how the gradebook works. Now these are the columns over here. Um, this will show you their actual grade for the class and you also have the option to um, view their report card grade once report cards are submitted. Um, this column will show the total points earned out of how many there were possible. And if you know how to use RenWeb's curving function, here is a column for that. I've never really used it before, so I don't imagine uh, you will have much need for that. So that is basically how it's uh, entered in. Uh, I'm going to go back up to the top, pan top center of the screen and show you a couple more uh, features. Let's say that you want to communicate with your students. I'm going to hit the communication tab. And you can see uh, this looks like um, an email function. Okay, so what you're going to do is basically uh, look through these students enrolled in the class and if you want to send an email to each of those students, you'll, you can either click over individual students into the recipients box right here by clicking this little arrow and now uh, this student is now in the, uh, the field as, will, as, having, uh, as will be receiving the assignment. If you want to move all of the students over, you'll simply hit the double arrow button, and now all of them are in that to field. And then what you need to do is select who will receive the message. Is it going to be the student? Is it going to be the student as well as their custody holders? Uh, you can put emergency contacts, grandparents. Uh, you can you can CC yourself on there. And so there's, there's lots of different options for reaching out to students. Um, it makes it really fast if you can do just a mass email like this. You're going to type your message down here with a subject line. Um, we've got a couple of different formatting tools to make it uh, more user friendly. And then you can also add attachments by clicking this browse button. Once you've composed your email and are satisfied with how it looks and who it's going to, you're basically going to click on send to your send to 47 email addresses or however many there are and that's how you communicate with a class um, now let's say you want to go down to the lessons plans lesson plans tab uh, this is where you're going to add in lesson plans for um, a particular day and so you'll see up here uh, in this column it's got specific days listed and um, you can click the add button next to a day to add in any homework, um, materials that you're using, any sort type of standards that you're um, trying to fulfill for that particular day. That information is going to go in here and uh, parents can look at that if they're just curious about what you're going to be doing on any given day. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory so I'm going to move on. Um, here is a lunch uh, screen. If if your students are ordering lunch and it's your responsibility to order for them, that's where you're going to do that. Now, report card. Um, here is where the report cards, report card grades will be um, generated um, for your class. And we, you know, we can go over that a little bit later on when it's towards the end of the term. I wouldn't mess with this too much for now. It's not really going to be an issue until. Uh, the semester's over and report cards are being generated. Okay. But for the daily tasks of a teacher, basically you're going to want to stick to the attendance tab, the communication tab, the grade book, and the lessons. Now if you click on the students tab, you're going to see a list of the students in that particular class. Uh, let's say I wanted to look up a student. Um, you can uh, filter results by demographics where it will give you information for how to contact them. Um, information on family, what the uh, grade is, um, their address, things like that. There's also a button for behavior. And so if you want to add a behavior entry for a particular student, you'll have to click the student, um, add a behavior entry, 
and you can describe what happened during this uh, particular event and you can even make notes that parents won't be able to see. Uh, so it's going to be very important that you document these things just so you can always protect yourself later on if it's ever an issue uh, that comes up. Um, you can also document parent-teacher conference. Uh, so even if it's just a phone call with a parent, that's something that needs to be documented. And so you can say, add conference. Good and there you are going to be able to uh, enter in the details of your correspondence with parents. So whether it's a whether it's a phone conversation or whether it was in person or via email, you can select those details and leave notes about what exactly was discussed in that parent teacher conference. Um, there are some already entered observations in here, uh, so if if your conference focuses around one of these issues, you can mark that. Um, and here's where you can enter in your recommendations, the parents' reactions to uh, the conference. Uh, and so this is just a really great tool for keeping track of all correspondence with parents. Um, going back to the main menu, uh, you'll see a web items. I've never really used this, so I doubt that you will ever need to use this either. Um, but that's basically my classroom. It's, it's going to contain all the buttons that you want to use on a daily basis in your classroom. Um, also on RenWeb, if you click the home menu again and click the drop down, you're going to see a, a little button that says people. And you're going to find much of the same information that you found in the communications tab in uh, my classroom. So you can, you can sort it by student, uh, you can sort it by... Uh, um, their demographics. This is a much more expanded view. You can look at their demographics again, um, behavior notes. But this is for all students um, that uh, are in the school. So you're really going to want to focus on the My Classroom section of this, of the, uh, uh, for communicating with students because this is just going to overload you with all students in the particular school. Um, going down more, we've got um, academic information, which U.S. teachers don't really need to worry about. This is more administrative things. Um, class rank and honor roll, graduation planner, that's more for guidance counseling. Um, admissions, that's not really for teachers either. Here's another attendance button. Here's, it's a shortcut to attendance, and so what I wanted to show you with this, if you, go, if you take attendance through this route um, and you select your class, I'm going to wait for this to load a little bit. But let's say I'm taking attendance for, um, let's say, my homeroom period. So I'm going to go down to uh, master. Let's go down to um, ninth grade homeroom, if I can find it. Okay, so there's my ninth grade homeroom right there. And let's say I'm taking attendance. Now, the cool thing about taking attendance through this um, option on RenWeb. Wait for it to load a little bit, there we go. Is that you don't have to mark individual codes for everyone. If everyone's all here, you can just hit this fill P button, which is just gonna fill in that everyone's here. And what I usually like to do as a teacher is I like to fill everyone as being present and then mark down the absences and tardies because it saves time when you do it that way. Um, okay. As we keep on going, uh, here's another link to the communications tool. But once again, this communications will be uh, more expanded than the one that was in your classroom. And so if you're only wanting to communicate with a certain class, go through my classroom. If you want to send emails to multiple classes, this is for you. Okay? You can see the different options. We can create a simple email message. We can create groups if in case we want to hold on to a specific group of people that we sent something to earlier. We can email reports to parents, like progress reports, uh, surveys, parent alerts. And these alerts are really cool because you can set the day and the time that these will go out. Um, and then you have these down here, uh, library. I've never really used that before, so I'm not going to worry too much about that in this video. Uh, medical could be of relevance to teachers. So if there were ever a medical incident, that happened in the classroom. You could always look up a student's medical information. Um, 
and figure out uh, you know, any special direction that would be needed in that type of a situation. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what RenWeb is to be used for as a teacher. Once again, you're really just gonna, gonna wanna stick around with the My Classroom uh, function, because that's gonna have everything you're really gonna need to do within a, a particular cool. class. And as soon as you venture into more expanded usage, like if you're contacting multiple classes, really that's when you should go and use these other options in the main menu, okay? I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me and uh, I'll see if I can help you out. Thanks so much for watching the video.